In the beginning, it was like this. Over vast periods of time, our primitive ocean was formed. First, the water remained a gas until the Earth cooled down. After the Earth's surface had cooled to a temperature below the boiling point of water, rain began to fall, and continued to fall for centuries. As the water drained into the great hollows in the Earth's surface, the primitive ocean came into existence, and the forces of gravity prevented the water from leaving the planet. The vast body of water that now covers 71% of the Earth is geographically divided into distinct named regions. 71% is a lot of water. Of course, it is impossible to know the exact number of species that live there. Scientists estimate that the oceans have 95% of the biosphere, that 91% of ocean species have yet to be classified, and that more than 80% of our ocean is unmapped, unobserved and unexplored. Nevertheless, research suggests that the number of species in the ocean is decreasing. The continued decline in the health of many ecosystems coupled with rising extinction rates, are likely outpacing species' ability to evolve to tolerate the conditions of our rapidly changing planet. But what exactly is changing? Ocean temperature, sea level, pollution... These are, by now, household names that we hear every day. On the news, on social media, at dinner with our family, these concepts are harsh reminders of what's happening right under our nose. Sea level can rise due to two different mechanisms with respect to climate change. First, as the oceans warm due to an increasing global temperature, seawater expands, taking up more space in the ocean basin and leading to a rising water level. The second mechanism is the melting of ice which then adds water to the ocean. We also hear about ocean pollution, particularly a lot about plastic pollution, and it's real. Every year, an estimated 5 to 12 million tons of plastic enter the ocean. More than 800 marine and coastal species are affected by marine plastics. But that's not all. Agricultural practices, coastal tourism, port and harbour developments, the damming of rivers, urban development and construction, mining, fisheries and aquaculture, among others, are all sources of marine pollution threatening coastal and marine habitats. We have reached a point where it's getting difficult to imagine all of the consequences this phenomena will bring to us. But how aware are we of these events? How well informed are we of the impacts of said events? And how are we, as a species and as members of society, contributing to it? To try to answer these questions, we decided to interview people with a wide array of ages, nationalities and backgrounds. From the beginning, our goal was to understand the level of information that exists not only in places that depend directly on the ocean, such as Portugal, but also in landlocked countries, pertaining to the way human beings impact the birthplace of life on Earth. We decided to start with our second home, our campus. With a wide variety of areas of the scientific community, FCUL is truly a great hub to discuss these topics. We found two willing volunteers that agreed to talk with us and answer some questions about the ocean. I should see. Uh, and como acaba por ser por todo o resto, ou seja, tá, acaba por estar tudo relacionado e tudo o que fazemos de um lado afeta o outro. Então, o clima e o oceano estão relacionados 
na medida em que o próprio oceano uh, pode ser muito influenciado por aquilo que hoje em dia são as muito chamadas alterações climáticas. Não tanto como gostaria de ter feito, uh, mas acho que a partir do momento posso por exemplo, falar de reciclagem, que é algo que eu faço, uh, e ter sempre atenção a consumos necessários, posso dizer que fiz isso. Então, reciclei e estudei o oceano. We also wanted to focus outside of our own bubble and ask people from all over the world what they thought about these topics in an effort to understand how informed they truly were. The ocean provides like um, it's a major sink of carbon. It provides food for us and stability. A lot of types of food, sea food, etc. Mm, um, different creatures, uh, fishing. Um, we can also look at uh, like people use oceans like a place where they can spend their time, uh, some activities, uh, fishing, etc. So they uh, have a lot of things to like to do with oceans. Ich benutze die Ozeane auf alle erdenklichen Arten und Weisen. Ich arbeite auf dem Meer und zeige interessierten Menschen Wale und Delfine seit sechs Jahren hier auf dem Azoren. Das heißt, jeden Tag ist mein Arbeitsplatz das Meer. Dann gehe ich nach der Arbeit schwimmen, schnorcheln und das Meer entdecken. Ich esse auch super gerne alle Arten von Fisch und Meerestieren. Das heißt, auch ernährungstechnisch benutze ich die Ozeane. Sempre usei o oceano para me transportar do pico para o faial, e do faial para o pico. Uh, uso também para tomar banho. Uh, uso para um, admirá-lo. Ah, seguramente, mangiamo peixe que vive no oceano. Arrivam a noi merci, transportate usando o oceano como estrada. Personalmente, queste. I do some recycling, I don't eat meat and fish, but. Mais c'est de belles poules, oui. Mais. Secondo me, l'unica cosa che do indietro all'oceano sono inquinamento, per cui quello che posso fare è dare meno inquinamento possibile. Not at all. <laughs> of course, not, not at all. Uh, as I previously said, the fisheries right now are not sustainable at all. We don't care about the ocean. We think it's like a, a trash and we throw yeah. everything in the ocean, no matter what. And now we start seeing the effects that <laughs> the ocean has a limit and we should take more care mm -hmm. of it. I think yes, although a little early, it's Mas ainda se, se agora uh, tiverem o cuidado uh, de informar e de, e de fazer cumprir as regras que são necessárias, talvez ainda vamos a tempo. Em Rússia, há muitas organizações e líderes públicos que tentam aumentar a importância deste problema and especially in re like in east of Russia where it's uh, oceans are really an important part of people's life like touristic food and like business and etc i believe we have some programs and also some volunteers that do something like clean beaches um they try to i don't know um maintain the living beings in the ocean um, maintain their life um, on the, at least on the same level or something like that. So I believe some particular people, the groups of people, they do something, but as a country, I don't believe we have any agenda on that. 
But our society isn't just the adults. What do the next generations have to say to our ocean? Dá-nos água. Uh, alimentação. Não, e ali poisson? E c'est bien de plonger comme ça, tu peux voir les poissons. Ça nous apporte du bonheur d'avoir quelque chose euh, euh, chez nous. Ça nous apporte, euh, voilà, ça nous apporte du bonheur. Nós gostamos de nadar, pescar. Também gostamos de fazer a observação de cetáceos, brincar à beira-mar. Mergulhar e observar os fundos dos oceanos. Uh, je fais uh, la chasse au coquillage, au beau uh, caillou. Après, je fais de la natation et je vais peut-être faire du surf avec. Voilà, on peut faire des châteaux de sable, on peut faire plein d'autres choses. Andar em pranchas. Fazer corridas no mar. Euh, tout simplement, je veux dire et merci. Pas créer des tsunamis et de jeter les plastiques dans l'espace. Dizia que gostava muito dele. So, over the course of this project, we heard from people all around the globe. But what does the ocean itself have to say about the situation it's in? The following words are a message from the ocean. Hello. Thank you for giving me a voice. It's true that I occupy more than 70% of your planet. And it's true that I am producing half of the oxygen you breathe and absorbing 50 times more carbon dioxide than your atmosphere. I am deeply entwined with our planet's climate and we influence each other deeply. From heat distribution to the effects my currents have on the weather, we can never be quite kept apart, and what impacts one will likely have an impact on the other. From fishing to whale watching, from diving to swimming, I also provide you with unique activities. I give you food, I give you a beautiful view, and I give you the tools you need to enrich your scientific experiments. Thanks to me, you have a variety of different tools in your hands, that allow you to choose your own path as humankind. But it seems as of recent, you are losing your north. Your moral compass seems to be taking you down a path that will prove to be life-changing. And even though you take small steps each day to get back on track, you will need to move mountains to save yourselves from the consequences of your own actions. Even though you challenge yourself to know more about the current state of events and what your country does to protect me, it still isn't enough, and the information that does exist isn't readily available either. The key is the future. The future you have in your own hands. Use the tools at hand to inform, to educate, and to prepare the future generations, so that your past mistakes can be learning experiences for the ones that will soon have all the power in their own hands. And finally, to you, my children, thank you for your words, for your actions, for your thoughts. Every time you play in the sand and splash around in the water, every time you take a deep breath and dive underneath the surface to explore the depths, and every time you build a castle and count on me to give it a moat, I am reminded that you are my, no, you are your own biggest hope. I may be changing, but I can adapt. The life within me will forever change, evolve, develop. Your future, however, is in your own hands, and your hands alone. And like the sand when you build your castle, it can easily slip through your fingers. Treat me like I am a member of your own family. Protect me like I am one of your own kind. Learn and teach to build a path that allows me to walk alongside you and I will do my best to give back to you. Let's build that sandcastle together. <laughs>